Right, there you go. Okay, hi everyone. Um, my pleasure to have this presentation about introduction to Australian building code. So today we probably do it not that formal way, in a more casual way. And also later on, we have some prize, you know, for the most active participants. So we're gonna have some questions. If you can answer, raise your hands or just type in, in the chat. And Larry will let me know, you know, who's wanna answer the questions. Okay, this PPT will be shared to you guys, um, but it will only just have some keywords. So please pay attention and be with me through the whole session. Okay, so what is BCA or NCC? The full name of BCA is Building Code of Australia and it has two volumes. And since 2011, so the Building Code BCA changed to the name of NCC, which is National Code of Construction. And it has three volumes, including the Plumbing Code. And also, the government make it free online since 2015. And in the past years, the practice have to buy hard copies every year. So now you guys um, can access the resource online free. So here's the website. So for anyone you don't know where to get this copy, so you may enter this um, the website and then have a read of all these volumes. So in between the presentation, if you do have any question, please ask. Okay, how do you understand BCA or NCC? Uh, my understanding is when we travel on the road, we do have rules, you know, to obey the traffic light. And when we live in a society, we have laws to regulate our behavior or action. And those rules to protect us and also to regulate us, you know, to probably, you know, offense other people. And the same in construction and building design. So BCA or NCC, those are the rules, you know, for building design and construction. And in our daily life, pretty much, you know, we deal with all different types of buildings. Of course, this year, you know, it's quite different. So we all work from home, study from home. So home is the space we, we stay in, you know, most of the time. But in the normal life, we probably stay in all different kinds of space. So you may have a coffee in the shop. You may do shopping in the shopping center. You play, you probably play basketball, you know, at a sports venue. Um, or you go to hospital, you know, for, or, for visit, you know, a patients or your family members. And those building space, you know, we deal with every day are very critical and important to human beings. And this, you know, a list of these rules and regulations in, in the building code. So ensure to protect human beings you know, from the perspective for safety, health, amenity, and also we try to um, minimize, you know, the energy we cons consume to buy the building so we can keep the environment more clean and sustainable. Okay, let's go through the classification. I'd probably like to interact with you guys. So how many, how many people would already heard of, you know, building classification? Anyone put their hands up? Or none of you, or you never, you never. Okay, let's see the chat group. Okay, I have, okay. Just one. Okay, how about we put it this way? Okay, so if you have heard of and you have some knowledge of building classification, you can type one. So we make it easy, just type one. So if you have. 
All right, all good. Okay, excellent. Okay, all right. And in the classification, do you just deal with a single type, say class one, you know, residential, or you deal with multiple? If you have dealt with multiple, you press, you, you type in two. Dang, okay. Anyone else? Multiple, more than other, more than just a residential. Right, okay. Oh, bread as well. Oh, good. Okay, so now we're probably gonna go through, quickly go through the classifications. The importance of building classifications is for design, especially the building designer or architects, we use that, you know, most or a lot of time. Um, so I'll quickly go through this list. So class one, class one is a single dwelling residential, which is, you know, normally we say that a single house. And class two, two or more than two units residential. So attachable, or independent, um, we say townhouses, or multiple units, medium to high density apartments. Class three, commercially, I would say commercially used accommodation, hotel, student accommodation, for example. Class four, any habitable space located within class two to nine. Um, a quick explanation of class four is it's beyond one, two, three, but still it's a habitable room. So it's a, people using that space within class two to nine. That probably that's a quick way to, to can remember it. Okay, class five, it's office. So typical use of class five, it's office. Class six, very commonly used, um, shops, restaurants, shopping center, so anything deal with the retail or hospitality. Class seven, car park, warehouse. Class eight, factory. Let me, let me, how do you go? So we've already gone through that. And class, yeah, class six, shopping center. Class, Eight, so factory, I'll repeat that. And class nine, that's an interesting class. Um, anyone deal with this in the past? Okay, class nine, hospital, school, nightclub, gym. And it has a three small class. We call that a 9A, 9B, and 9C. And now it's a question. So we can have a prize for this question. You probably can put your Vo uh, volume, you, know, you can unmute yourself. Okay, can anyone can see what's the common in this group? Hospital, school, nightclub, gym. Can anyone tell me what's the common between those classes or those type of buildings? Um, yeah, right? uh, I guess no one really habits them. They just kind of hold people as a place of, I don't know, that. Like, I want to say like shelter, but it's not like habitable besides the uh, hospital, I guess. Okay. Then uh, residential is habitable too. So. Yeah. Okay. Right. So hospital, school, nightclub, gym. Yes. All these ones. Okay. But no, thank you for participating. Um, so Larry, please give a tick to Dane. So later we probably can have a prize, you know, for people who's active. Okay, the common between those classes is actually it's it's more um, more cap capacity. So we say that you know higher density in the space. So for example, you know school. Um, so commonly we have this project. It's change of use. You know from from normal office area or office space. You know to nine B. So nine B is educational space. So if you study in university library, um, all those you know actually under nine B because it's more high um, capacity. And with higher capacity, we need to provide um, more um, to the fire service, to the mechanical, because there are more people in the same space. So does this make all sense to you guys? Okay, last one is class 10, which is non-habitable space or room. For example, carport and swimming pool. 
So you can tell, you know, people not living in those space. Um, this you can see, so volume, if we go back to volume, how can I? Um, Okay, so now you can see volume. So there are two volume, which is, you know, uh, volume one is class 229 and volume two is class one and 10 only. So there is non habitable room and single dwelling residential, they're actually in one volume and the rest in between. So they're all in, this, in the volume one, the blue volume. Yes, I would highly recommend you all remember the classifications because um, the service, the regulations, it's applied differently you know, to those class. So first identify what's the class of these use. And then you know, to find out more other regulations, you know, how, how are we gonna assess um, you know, the design and regulations against the class, yeah. Okay, let me go back to... Where are we up to? Okay, now we talk about why building code is so important. I also like to see you guys typing. <laughs> Oops. Uh, okay, I'll put it on there. All right. Uh, so why building code is so important? Um, so we can have a look of this content of um, national the NCC. Um, so for example, so fire resistance. So the, the building code, it covers all different pers perspective, you know, related to the building. And also, you know, for to protect us, you know, for the health, the safety, all these reasons. So, and we just pick some of the items so you can go through and explain that. Okay, fire resistance. Usually these apply to building materials. So all building materials um, sold in Australia, they have to comply to Australian standard, you know, in terms of providing a fire resistance testing report. So all these building materials they sell in Australia, you know, they need to be um, tested and also certified and to meet Australian standard. Access and egress. For example, staircase size, height, the riser and going size, and the handrail height. So all this is related, you know, how we occupy the space. Services and equipment fire service, fire service system, cooling and heating equipment or system, and the lift mechanical systems. Health and amenity. So here it has listed all the small items. So room heights, lighting capacity. So we're able to see, to read, and for different you know, classifications. So for example, we give examples. So in hospitality, um, you know, the dining area and the kitchen area, so that's different lighting capacity. Disabled and mobility, so travel paths and equipment set up for disabled people. So typically in Australia, you know, we're quite looking after those um, uh, disabled people. So we're going to ensure the building code is looking after those in you know, a minor group of people as well. So we don't have that discrimination, you know, to for those um, uh, people they use the space. So we have that equal, equal, like a, what do you call that? Like an attitude or manner, you know, to so they able to use that space space at the same time. Yeah. Uh, Next one. Okay, next one, I'm gonna give two examples of, you know, if we fail to comply with the building code. So I'll give you one minute or maybe less than that, just a quick, have a quick read of this case.
Okay, when you finish, can someone just give me top in one? So I can continue. Okay, thanks. All right, good. So here's a case, you know, a lady fell at, uh, you know, in the coast supermarket. And, for, and also, you know, she resulted, you know, in a um, broken left ankle and probably possibly, you know, it's a permanently, you know, injury. Um, so this case, you know, the, the, the lady actually won the case. And so this is, could be one example, you know, I guess at that time, you know, the reason the lady fell, it probably, you know, it's related to the building materials. So the slip resistance of the flooring they use so you may notice, you know, when you go to Coles supermarket, it probably looks like, a, you know, either polished concrete flooring or it's a vinyl flooring. Um, and those are flooring um, when there's a water or oil on the surface, you know, the slip resistance can be changed, like, you know, significantly. Uh, significant then slip resistance, you know, to the building materials is actually all building materials, it has a um, specification of, you know, the slip resistance rating. Um, we give examples. So typical, the rating for the flooring is P10. P10 plus, that's for public use. And if it's P13, so it's very commercially graded uh, slip resistance in the kitchen area. But still, you know, you need to probably wear the right shoes to work in the kitchen, in the commercial kitchen. So that's why, you know, when it's not comply, so we have seen, you know, some in some construction, you know, they change the materials probably for the reason, uh, you know, like um, the stock not available at the time, or they're trying to, you know, cut the budget um, and they change the materials. Because one designer, they design this or specify the materials they have considered, you know, the slip resistance. And when the building survey, the, they assess the whole documentations, they have stamped and approved the selection of materials. But if you change it during the construction and the slip resistance, it doesn't meet um, the standard or the building code. And then later on, something happened to the customer. This will be end up, you know, which can be a very common uh, result, you know, to to be have to have that penalty. So now you can see the importance of building code. Okay, next case. Okay, fire. Um, so if you lived in Australia, you know, before 2009, yes, we had a disaster in 2009, February. And before that, the building code, it didn't cover very much about, you know, in the bush area zoning that, you know, are relating uh, regarding to the building materials, the glazing and um, what do you call that, the uh, vegetations surrounding. Yes, and because of that disaster, so the building code changed a lot and then putting a lot of regulations, um, set up a lot of regulations related to this matter. So that's also, that's also proof that, you know, the building code is actually to protect a human being when they stay in a certain space, in a rural area or in any, you know, internal space of building. So now these days, if you need to design um, any um, farmhouses, you know, you definitely need to check what's the requirement for those um, bushfire, you know, zoning, um, and also the building code, you know, how to design and select the building materials. Okay, next one. Right, there are two volumes of building code. Do I need to remember all of them? Of course, my answer will be no. Um, so that's why building designers or architects, we deal, um, we spend quite a bit of time, you know, dealing with the all different sub consultant. So they can be the whole list of what's in the on the screen. Fire engineer, mechanical, structural consultants. It can be material supplier, or it can be lighting supplier. Um, building surveyor, yes. So building surveyor is the key person um, to assess all the docu documentations and all the designs by those sub-consultant and by architects to ensure everything meets Australian building code and building regulations. 
So beside the building code, um, those volumes themselves, there are also other building um, Australian standard, you know, for all different type of uh, practice. So if you design residential house, you know, you probably heard of rest code. So rest code, that's uh, another set of Australian standard to ensure, you know, everything designed according to um, the government's old Australian compliance. Do you have any questions re regarding to those subconsultant? No, nope, all good. Okay, thanks, Dane. Uh, we found when we deal with those subconsultants, um, sometimes they probably they advise our conflict. Um, so, for example, you know, the fire, they may say, okay, they want to do this, but probably it's conflict, you know, to the structure engineer. So, so that's really up to the architects to resolve and to work with them, you know, how, what's the best solution to comply both. Okay, now it's question time to you guys. Uh, where we to? Bushfire, okay, all good. Okay, now we, from now on, we're gonna do some case study. Okay, now question time, put you up, unmute yourself. Okay, now question one, we have a prize, we have a prize. Okay, Larry, please. Um, hospitality, what's the class of hospitality? Mm, no. What's the classification number of hospitality? Restaurants. Class, Different. class three? Mm, no, six. Enroll. Enroll got it right. Six. All shops, bars, retail, hospitality, it's under six. Yeah, because this class we use, we deal with a lot. Yeah. So either you do commercial, you do commercial, um, what do you say, commercial projects, say car showrooms or retail design or interior design, you know, class six is a, we deal a lot. And in our daily life, you know, those are the spaces or the building types we use the very often as well. So remember class six and class, what's that one? Class five, five is office, yeah. Right, next one, sports venue, sports venue. Is it class nine? Bingo, yes. Who, who's this? Dane. Dane. Thanks, Dane. Yes, class nine. Uh, this is a badminton. Um, go back. So this project is we've done, we um, convert a warehouse in Clayton. Uh, Clayton is a, a suburb in Melbourne. So we convert a warehouse uh, into a badminton court. So with the flooring, with the lighting and the mechanical, uh, fire service, we need to ensure that compliant to 9B because it's a um, uh, higher, you know, high capacity. When they say high capacity, you probably, if you go to the space, you may not see many people at a time, but uh, the 9B on the building permit or occupancy permit, it has the number. It has a very clear number saying, okay, how many capacities at any time? So does that mean like a stadium would be class nine as well? Yes. Sweet. Hmm. Yes. And also uh, when it comes to class nine, um, it's it's also related. If 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 your client say, okay, you know, if the, the property developer they want to say, okay, I want to achieve that many. That, that number say, for example, I want a 200 or 100 you know, in this space at any time, then that's not up to how big the space you have. It's actually up to determined by the amenity you're able to provide it. So for example, you know, if it's a gym, 
So it's not okay. So they say, okay, I have such a big warehouse. No, it's not up to that. You know, the floor areas, it's really determined by the amenity you're able to provide it. For example, so shower, toilets, disabled toilets, staircase, access. So all these are compliant, yes. So of course, you know, the more toilets you're able to provide, so the, num the higher numbers you're able to achieve. Okay, um, right. This is also a case we, we had um, in the past. Um, okay, we've already have the answer there, right. <laughs> Um, okay, let, let's just go through the image. So the image on the left, um, these two looks very similar, you know, they all look like uh, aluminum uh, duct work. But the difference is the one on the left is for air conditioning. The one on the right is mechanical exhaust system. So difference is, so AC unit, it's provide cooling and heating. Um, so make, you know, it's more for the comfortable needs, you know, to, to the internal space, you know, how people in the space to feel. But exhaust the system is to extract air or smoke in, from inside of the building to outside. So in, especially in those class six, if it's a restaurant, it's not compulsory to have air conditioning in the kitchen, but it is, you know, definitely compuls compulsory. It's a must to have exhaust the system. Um, in the case of the left, um, so there was a small story is um, when our client went to the site, okay, and the, the leasing agent, the real estate agent, they told the tenant, okay, you know, you have exhaust the system. It's because exhaust the system, it costs uh, quite a bit of money for the tenant to install. Um, so the agent said, okay, yeah, you already have that exhaust system. So they signed the lease. And when it came to us, um, we took a side visit and we realized and we told them, sorry, no, this is not exhaust the system. It's actually just the air conditioning. So they have to, they still have to um, prepare more money, more cost to ensure the exhaust the system is installed in that space. So for designer to understand and identify those uh, service system are very important as well. Okay, um, ceiling height. I know today I probably more focus on those commercial type of projects uh, is because residential it actually has less issues um, compa comparing to commercial project. Okay, uh, ceiling height. Mm. So when designer, we, we inspect the site. So ceiling height, very, it's a, another very critical, um, like, a, you know, the, the, the matter we need to focus on. It's because in the space, we, most of the time we probably focus on, okay, what's internal, what's, you know, to be, looks like nice. But with the building service, with um, you know the fire service, that also that's that's the the essential part of the whole project. So in this case, we had this shop in Brunswick Street in Melbourne, and the ceiling, the slab clearance is only three meters, and it's a ground floor of a whole apartment building. So when the original development was designed, they didn't allow enough space for service in the shop, in the tenancy. And they only applied for the use. So they say, okay, this is, those are the shops we um, indicate or we planned. They are for hospitality or for retail use, but the ceiling height itself, it doesn't allow, have that enough allowance to have that mechanical system in. So in this typical case, the underneath of the slab is three meters. And once we have that mechanical system for exhaust in, the clear ceiling height only end up at 2.2. 2. 
So the, the regulation is 2.1 at a minimum. So 2.2, it's still, you know, it's still can pass the regulation, but it's not a comfortable because it, we probably prefer a bit more higher ceiling. So to have that comfortable needs. So for any shop, you know, the slab ceiling is less, less than three meters, which means, you know, even though the use saying you can use it for hospitality, but the ceiling height not allowed you to, 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 to have that. Mm, ah, so yes, so this is the, the next page of the case I was um, talking about. So this is a mechanical design. You can see, so the mechanical design, they have this duct work, the air in and also air out. So to keep that air pressure balanced in the small space. Okay, this is very common um, mechanical design in those street shops too. For those ground floor retail space, they, when the development was planned and designed, some apartments, they don't allow exhaust to the rooftop. So those shops, they have to provide the exhaust to the shop front themselves. So from the duct work, you're able to see, I don't know, you guys can, can you see my mouse? So you can see the airs, you know, the airs goes in and also the exhaust, they have this filter system and to have that air out. And just those units, you know, ECU, that's a filter units. It's very deep, it's 700 deep. So if you have very low ceiling height, so you're not able to have that clear um, internal height. Okay, disable access. Residential comparing to commercial. So residential, you can you probably you, you see that a lot. Yeah, you have staircase, you know, at home. It's because it's more for private use. So you're able to you can for your if you have disabled, you know, uh, family members, then they can stay on the ground level, and other members they can go upstairs. Um, and with those st staircase and handrail, and also the riser and going. Um, it has all very clear um, regulations, you know, in the code, in the building code. And for commercial use, we need to consider all type of people. So the space, the access need to be available, you know, for everyone. So this is quite a typical case. Um, so it's in the public area. So you have staircase, you know, for, um, I mean, just for, for non-disabled people and also disabled access, yes. If you do have any questions, just unmute yourself and I can answer. All right, so for, uh, this is another case. Uh, it's in a restaurant again. So if we walk through the floor plan, so this is those are the entrance, the front entrance. So we go in, looks like, you know, there's a small ramp at the doorway. And these two shops adjacent to each other so they two shops, two old, old uh, street shops, you know, combined into one tenancy. And there's a floor difference. So you need to provide ramp to ensure the width of the ramp and the degree, you know, the, the, the gradient of the ramp comply to your building code as well. And also for public use, yes, definitely, you know, the disabled, uh, disabled toilet. Yeah, so comparing these two type of project, you know, definitely commercial project, there's more issues we need to consider. Okay, for safety purpose, fire alarms, yeah, very easy to understand. So ensure, okay, to give an alarm, a notice, okay, there's a, there's a smoke or there's a fire. And the sprinkler system, emergency lighting, so all all these are very commonly used or not a commonly used must have in any type of building except residential, I believe so. Residential only has yeah, the fire alarm, but a sprinkler systems is in commercial. So class, 
class two to nine. Yes, class two to nine. Emergency lighting, yes, in class two to nine. Okay, Pa J. Pa J of building code is talking about energy efficiency. And energy efficiency is uh, to be assessed from different perspectives. So energy efficiency, building fabric, building ceiling, ventilation system and the lighting system. So from all different, uh, all different perspectives to ensure that a building consume less energy. So those calculations is sometimes if it's uh, not very complicated projects, it's actually the calculation done by designer or architect. And the other situation is done by the subconsultant. Okay, to understanding, so myself found, you know, in my practice, um, to understanding the building code, it helps us, you know, to, to achieve and to make, you know, the concept design and into a real, it can be a practical building or space. Um, so we, we not, when we design a space, yes, of course, we like to make it in a very dramatic, you know, or very, um, very nice, very creative. So we like to input a creativity in the space, but also to comply with the building code, it's, it's more functional. So it's, it's ensure people able to use that space. Mm. Okay, that's it. Right. Um, okay, you can unmute yourself. So today looks like uh, the prize goes to uh, Larry. Can I? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Wang. Thank <laughs> no, you, no Rita. Problem. Yes. It's a very enlightening and uh, enlightening presentation. Okay. It's, uh, give us a right way how to use and uh, why we use PC code in practice. Okay, thanks. thank you, thank you, Rita. Okay, so if you any questions, you can ask Rita right yeah. now. So any questions or any case you are working on now, you know, you have, um, you want to ask me or discuss with me? Yes, or other things, for example, you want to know, uh, Something, something ask me your career, you know, your future, how to look, how to look for a job and how mm -hmm. to develop your own business. Okay, you can discuss with Rita. Yes, she has her own business. Yeah. Okay. Um, I probably I give some um, like tips or yeah about uh, you know how to choose your uh, your career. Okay, so in construction industry, actually there are multiple multiple streams you know it's not just um, designer or architects um so before i list out you know all the consultants as well so and also land surveyor building surveyor and building surveyor you can have the option you know working the government or work as a private building surveyor as well um and also their project manager uh what's other job um and even strata manager you know the strata the building uh, owner co corporation manager management as well so and real estate and also interior designer interior decorator so there are actually a lot of um different type of um job and a position that you're able to involve you know in the construction industry so don't just limit it, your don't just limit yourself you know just to designer only yes and also in the construction, you know, there are trades for, for designer. If you have a design background and if you want to, you don't mind, you go into the, the trade you know, industry. Um, so like a stainless steel fabricator, uh, what else? The mechanical contractors. Yes, mechanical contractors, um, if they have, you know, understanding of how design works, it's actually benefit, you know, them to, with their um, installations. Um, what else? Yes, yeah, so, so there are actually a lot of um, all different different type of work. You, you can find out your own interest, you know, what's your interest? Do you enjoy to work in the office doing drawings or you find, you find yourself more enjoying, you know, on the site? Um, so I'll probably I would suggest, you know, to find out, talk to yourself, you know, find out what's your, really what's your passion, what's your interest and what's your personality like? 
um, and what really you know can 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 inspire you or can uh, you can what's your passion? Yes, if you really enjoy on site, you know, okay, so coordinate site coordinator, uh, even tenancy coordinator, you know, for shopping center and uh, project manager. So those jobs are fantastic as well. Yeah. Mm. So anyone okay. at the moment they will have a bit confusion or not sure about how what they want to do. Hey, um, I have a question about the um, just drawing at the you know construction work. Yeah. Um, I was in construction site around eight years as a tile and waterproofer. Um, when I just working the site, I'm just looking at the drawing for the following any of the detail, but I never saw kind of you know the BCA code by myself at that mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So can I believe that you know all the you know code and detail is in the drawing, you know, kind of site plan or, you know, elevation or kind of something. Um, yeah, sometimes, okay. yeah. Sometimes right. I looked for Australian standard, but, you know, kind of BCA because I never saw before, just before studying. Right, okay. Can you repeat that? Uh, so where did you work? Oh. Just a construction site as a tiler and waterproofer. Okay, tiler and a waterproofer, okay, right. On the drawings, there's no, there's probably no um, typical details of what kind of project are you working on? Residential or commercial? Oh, uh, you know, yeah, far out, yeah. Kind of hotel, residential, commercial, everything. Right, okay, okay. Um, usually those are regulations for waterproofing. It's actually in the general notes. You know, if you receive a set of drawings, you know, on the first few pages, there are a lot of writing and then it has the waterproofing Okay, the designer, what they do is they just specify and say everything complied to Australian standard. Mm -hmm. I know this is sounds in you know, a bit lazy way to do it, but um, we they just put those notes in, you know, to cover themselves. Um, so in the general notes, it says, okay, with waterproofing, uh, you you know install uh, you how do you say you apply you know the multiple layers you know for the waterproofing and you know how much higher above the floor probably 300 or maybe more, you know, it depends on what's the use of it. And it says Australian standard, such, such number. And in that Australian standard, those Australian standard need to be purchased online. So they're not for free. Mm, so there's a, yeah, there's a typical uh, Australian standard, you know, for waterproofing, for mechanical system. Um, and those are very detailed and it gives you the dimensions and uh, finishes, you know, all these, um, all these specifications. Yeah. So you probably, you don't see the waterproofing details on the drawing. It's all in Australian standard. Yeah. Yeah. As you, yeah, usually I just follow the TDS from the, the product. Yeah, that's right. Yes. The products themselves, um, they will ensure their products comply to Australian standard. Yes. Mm. Mm, okay. So, thanks. Yes, so tradies, you know, I don't, I don't think they would have time to study Australian standards. Um, so that's why the product supplier, they ensure their products comply and also they educate, you know, the installer how to use that products and with the detail links, you know, and the instruction, yeah. Thank you so much. No, no, you're welcome. Um, other questions? So anyone who's a, uh, okay, let, let probably, uh, let me ask you a question then. Um, anyone who's, where can I see the chat? Um, do I stop sharing? Okay, I'll stop sharing then. I'd like to see your chat. Okay, uh, so who, who will be interested of residential projects in the future? So in your future job, you would uh, selecting, you want to develop your career in the residential. So you can tap one and in commercial, you can tap two. Um, I'm currently at the moment working for a residential company um, mm -hmm. at the moment, but I think I might want to go on to doing bigger jobs. Mm. Um, I've worked with my old man. He's got his own residential company. So mm. um, and I just probably want to get my foot in the door with the bigger projects. 
um, that you see around. I've got a couple of close family friends that actually has got some pretty successful commercial sites, which are pretty interesting to me. So I -hmm. think that's the pathway I'm going to take. Mm. Yes. um, If you, and then what's the role you want to play in those projects as designer? Uh, A project manager. Project manager. Okay. Yep. Um, so project manager, um, so communication, coordination skills, management, yeah, they're very critical. And so you can develop, you know, more skills in like time management um, and also, you know, liaison because a lot of time it's, 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 it's not a, the trouble, you know, of the work itself. It's always, you know, it's more about how you, how you deal with people. Yeah. 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 Um, and also have a good connection with the sub consultants um, or the trades, you know, that's uh, very helpful as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Um, so residential and commercial, they're quite different. Um, so with my own experience, I've done um, medium to high density residential design. And also I have involved in car showroom design as well. Um, and also private school in Melbourne. Um, they're very different. And I found myself, you know, more have more passion in commercial as well. Yes. It's because every side they are different. Um, and then you deal deal with uh, you learn a lot of knowledge, you know, from those sub consultant too. Mm. Okay, so Larry, so today's prize goes to who do you think? Probably Dane, isn't it? Yeah, yes, Dane. Yeah. Dane and Enroll. Yeah, Enroll answered the, the other question. Um, yeah. Who's the other one that answered the classification nine? Was that Dane? Yes. So, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, okay, the prize option, <laughs> the prize option <laughs> is it's. Uh, I would say you have options. So either it's architecture Lego, a skyline. I don't have the image here, uh, but I can promise, you know, I will post to you. So it's the architecture skyline set. Or it's a $50 Amazon voucher. I'll take the Amazon voucher, please. Okay. <laughs> oh, welcome. Yeah. And how about Errol? Um, Lego. Lego is much better to build one. Okay. No problem. Sweet. Thank you very much. Okay. Oh, there's a uh, one more question. Oh, okay. Lego. Okay. Um. Can you write, someone type in Chinese, okay, I can read it. So can you explain something about, I'm not sure about this question. Is far, that, far resistance, far yeah, far separation. Resistance. Yeah. Or is that about a fire, fire service? Yeah. <laughs> Sleep resistance or fire service. Renal, renal. So, so Renal, what do you exactly uh, want to know more about? Is that fire resistance or or sleep resistance? Yes, I like in the year three, you have a. Uh... Subject, subject, you unit, you will learn very, very detail related to file resetting system mm. and the building service system. Okay, you will, that will be a, that will be a U unit for you. Yeah. Oh, fire resistance. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. It's uh, so with the residential, so Dane probably already deal with um, you know, with the fire resistance. So with, uh, for example, so if two units, you know, duplex building, they're next to each other, but the party wall in between the units, they need to achieve a certain um, minutes for fire. So it's either 90 minutes or, you know, 120. Of course, the longer, you know, the materials, you know, the, the longer it can last. 
in fire, you know, the better for people to evacuate. Yeah. And also why we say in building materials need complied in Australia. Um, and it is a long time um, certification period as well. So lately we, we know one of the building materials, you know, comes from uh, imported materials. They want to be certified. And the period for the whole process is um, almost about two years. And the building material supply, they need to invest about $100,000, you know, just to get all the fire tested down and assessed and it goes through that application stage, yeah. So in 2000, what year was it? In 2000, so there was a fire, you know, there was a building on fire in Dockland in Melbourne, so probably well known. Um, so the external cladding, aluminium, aluminium panel cladding. So it was burnt um, because that building, that building materials, uh, materials was installed by the builder. So on the specification of the documentation, the designer select uh, Australian certified materials, but in during the construction, it's been changed to something else. Hmm. But then when the building signed off, you know, when the building completed, building surveyor go to the site and really didn't pick up the, the difference, you know, because it all looks very similar. It's, it all looks like, you know, metal cladding, and, but the, in the, the, the inside lining is different fire resistance, you know, compared to the selected material, yes. So those, so this case was, uh, was actually, you know, they, they had these arguments. So end up the, the court made a decision. So the designer, the structure engineer, and also builder. So they all share the responsibility and the penalties. Hmm. So everyone has that responsibility. So especially designer, architect, they need to ensure it's selected rightly and also installed, you know, someone, so PM, so dang. So if you are PM, you're gonna ensure, yes, that's the right products to be installed. It cannot be changed to something else. Exactly. Mm. During the construction process as architectures, uh, where you go to the site to inspect the construction quality or, or following the drawings where you are not? Oh, uh, definitely. Even though it's not covered in our service, we still, um, myself, spend time, you know, go to the site. So with those retail project, it's a small, it's non-structural, um, but still it's critical, yes. So with the size, um, so that's why it's related to building code. Because building code under joins, we may say the pathway in the restaurant is one meter. That's to meet the building code. But then uh, when the tradies or carpenter or whoever, you know, they build the joinery, they build uh, the wall, and the size is, is less than one meter. So we, it's better for us to tell them when they're still in the process, rather than when everything's finished, building surveyor come to check. And they really they use a tape to measure, you know, the actual width. Even though it's a short by 10 mils, the wall probably has to be, you know, rebuilt. Yeah, removed and rebuilt. Yeah. And yes. there's, the, there's the cost of the time. Yeah, and, and the cost to the tenant. So that's, um, so who, who's, who's responsible for this? Yeah. So it's, it's really, um, so Dan, so with PM, so it's, it's not just okay whose responsibility sometimes it's okay we probably have to to um give a bit more consideration you know to remind other parties at earlier stage so so to avoid that arguments you know at the end do, do you know what i mean yeah it's 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 like you know the whole team so it's looking after each other making like justification before then it rather excuses later yes 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 because uh because with uh with the, the whole project you know it's complicated you know because it involves involves multiple parties um and everyone is human being so there could be you know human error here and there so at any stage you know okay even though it's it's not my responsibility, but if I do pick up something, you know, it's better to to communicate with that party quickly enough, yeah. So to avoid, because at the end, even though okay, it's not my 
my my you know my part it's not my fault it's not your fault but then uh, you know the project stuck there and it's everyone's loss yeah yeah yes uh, i remember we are worked you know in Bauchi, we always uh, there's a culture you know the cultural management uh, we develop all the stakeholders to for all four projects you know we always see all four projects no excuse uh, every every stakeholder you must follow in the rules of for projects no excuse there's no others this is a cultural management yes you are like that Mm. Yeah. Okay, any questions for guys? Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Thank you, Rita. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you for your this is your training team for presentation. Yes. Right. Yeah. I just uh, just one more just one yeah. more minute. Um okay, I think I forgot to share these. Okay, guys. Right. Um be able to see okay okay now um so rita yes now it's a youtuber as well so um and i created a new channel it's called uh, hot mama rita uh and in that channel there's a list it's about okay about a lot of um construction informations you know share on this channel so we have uh, videos you know about how to install laminated glass to shop front um, this is the video recording the whole process, you know, how there is big 3.6 glasses to be installed, you know, from the start to finish. And also some design information like a design and fit out procedure for business in Australia. Yes, and more other videos, you know, coming uh, weekly on this channel. Um, I understand it is in Mandarin. Uh, it's because we like to help those um, uh, probably new migrants, you know, to understand the construction um, knowledge, you know, in Australia. Uh, but then it has all English subtitles. So if you watch on pad or uh, desktop, yes, you can change to the English subtitle. Yeah, so you can follow my channel, and uh, we can be um, in touch, you know on the comments yes great yeah thank you rita okay uh yeah yeah we all stop here okay thank you everyone for coming okay we all see you next time yes yeah okay thank okay. you yes thank, thank you bye you. yes bye yeah. thank you thanks bye